Hello, everyone. My name is Ivy. The happy family is a myth for many, but there's something that makes my case special. It just so happened that my mom played two roles in my life. In the first case, she was a demanding mother. In the second one, she was a tough coach. A lot of teenagers tend not to get along with their parents, but they can at least feel safe and invulnerable outside their home. I never had even that. My mom used to be an honored professional tennis star, so since early childhood, my life routine looked more like military service. But little did I know what devastating truth was behind all that. My mother would wake me up at 7 a.m. every single day and make me work out, and she would scream and yell at me if I was too slow or lazy. Don't get me started on my tennis lessons. She was just ruthless. I would leave almost every training in tears. Mom would push me much harder than anybody else on my team and never praise or encourage me, even if I was doing well. Sometimes I doubted if she loved me even a little. Why did she have to treat me that way? Because of my dad? It was not my fault that he left her right after I was born, was it? I never made any effort to fight against all this injustice until I had a strong reason for it. Destiny gave me a wonderful gift that day. Our chemistry teacher got sick, so the last school lesson was canceled. Before I knew it, my classmate, Miles, came up to me and suggested going to some new cafe to try their ice cream. It all sounded like a completely impossible fairy tale to me. I couldn't remember when the last time was that I had even tried ice cream. Miles and I had such a great time together. We were actually just chatting and eating ice cream, but... I felt like it was the best day in my whole life. I suddenly felt tears flowing down my face. Miles was very confused. He immediately attacked me with questions about what could possibly make me so upset, but I smiled through my tears and said, I'm just happy, that's all. Everything changed since that day in the cafe. Miles and I instantly fell in love with each other. We would try to spend every single minute together, which was pretty hard because, as you remember, I was not supposed to have any free time at all. I had to lie and to invent excuses for skipping school and even tennis trainings. Even though I did my best to keep my love affair a secret, it didn't take my mother long to catch us red-handed. It was Miles's 18th birthday, a big day for both of us, and there was nothing on earth that could prevent us from spending it together. And as luck would have it, there was a very important tennis tournament around the corner, which I definitely had to take part in and win, of course. I had tough trainings every day and my mother was as cruel as ever. She tried to track every second of my life, day and night. So the only way to trick her was to sneak out of the house at night. I had to be back home by 7 a.m., though, so that she did not find anything out. I felt like a freaking Cinderella. Everything worked like a charm. Miles and I went driving around town, and then we stopped near a wonderful lake. We decided to have a birthday picnic right there. We were eating, chatting, and lying under the stars. I was listening to Miles' stories, closed my eyes, and when I opened them, I saw that the sun was right above me, shining bright. Miles was still quietly sleeping nearby. I looked at my watch, and my heart sank. It was almost nine o'clock in the morning. My last training before the most important tennis tournament of a lifetime was supposed to finish in a half an hour. And of course I had a million of missed calls from my mom. I mean, it was the end of the world. Of course, Miles did his best to drive me to the training as fast as he could, but it was all gone. So there I was, standing in the doorway of the training hall, ten minutes before the end of the lesson— wearing a fancy dress instead of my uniform with all these surprised eyes on me. I felt my mother was looking at me, but I didn't have the heart to look her in the eye. I knew she would never let me get away with it, but what she did next was beyond any of my expectations. She suddenly started laughing and cried out, Look at her, everyone. That's a living example of what happens when you choose hanging out with God knows who and having fun instead of working hard and being grateful for what you have. I was so stunned I couldn't breathe. And then my mother added, You don't deserve to be a part of this team anymore. Get out of here. I was running so fast I don't even remember how I got home or how much time had passed after I collapsed on the sofa and burst into tears. 
When my mother came back home in the evening, I already knew what I was going to tell her. I was done looking for love where it didn't exist. I was done coughing up dust in attempts to drink from dry wells. I declared, I'm giving up sports. I'm giving up you. Mom gave me that disgusted look for the last time, and I didn't even say a word. A week afterward, I turned 18 years old, and Miles and I decided to move in together. He started college in another town, so I was happy to live far away from my so-called home. Now I had all the time in the world to think it all over and make plans for my future. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I missed tennis, and that it was actually the only thing I could do well in this life. Now it was time to take things into my own hands. It was not that hard to find a sports school and a good coach who fully appreciated my skills. I was back in the game. Now I was training hard every day, but because it was me who wanted to do it. Very soon I got another chance to take part in that very interstate tournament my mother had cut me out of. The judgment day had come. When it was my cue and my coach and I headed to the court, I suddenly felt somebody staring at me. Our eyes met. It was my mother. I think I set my soul on fire, but I just passed by, pretending I hadn't recognized her. I fought for victory like I never had before. When I was finally standing in front of that enormous crowd of people with a golden medal around my neck, the only thing I wanted to do was to shove that very medal down my mother's throat. I was aware that she was looking at me, and that was the moment of peace and relief for me. It's been a while. Life was finally good, because it was me who now took control of it. I thought I could not feel any happier, but one day I got a call. It was a doctor who called me from the hospital to tell me something horrible had happened to my mother. It turned out she had taken a bad fall during training and hurt her back. I had mixed feelings. My first instinct was to grab the phone and to call my mother, but I didn't know if she wanted to talk to me. I didn't want any more rejection. I had enough. I finally made an effort and pressed the button. When I heard my mother's voice, I felt shivers going down my spine. After an awkward pause, I asked, Do you want me to come? I was really surprised to hear a yes instead of, Screw you, Ivy. I also couldn't remember if my mother's voice ever sounded so soft. That very evening, I was already on the inner city bus, which was taking me back home. But when I finally found myself in the doorway of my mother's hospital room, I just froze. At some point, I felt as terrified and humiliated as I did on that very day when I was late for training and stood in the doorway of the training hall. I finally opened the door to see my mother lying in bed, all bandaged up. She looked much older, though it had only been a little more than a year since we had seen each other. We were just staring at each other, not being able to start a conversation. My mom broke the silence and said, I saw you at the tournament. A solid win. Good job. I felt a lump in my throat. That was the first praise I ever heard from my mother. And then she told the truth that turned everything upside down, but actually made things work out. She told me the story about my birth and my father. They both used to be professional tennis players, determined to rock this world. Shortly after their whirlwind romance had started, my mother got pregnant. My dad seemed to be on cloud nine, but sometimes life takes some surprising turns. My mother had a very difficult delivery, which had not been without cost. I was born with some bad musculoskeletal deficiencies. Doctors said I would not even be able to walk by myself. My father disappeared forever. He just left me and my mother all alone with a disabled baby in her arms. It all broke her heart. She set a goal to heal me and to prove to my father and the doctors how wrong they were. That's why she made me work so hard. She did everything she could to make me as healthy as anybody else and even more. She made me a winner at life. I finally found my peace, and I've forgiven my mom. We still don't talk much, but we try to spend more time together. She has recovered and is now still coaching young athletes. Now I strongly believe that in some sense, every parent does love their children. But some parents are too broken to love them well.